This video is for men who are doubting their relationship. In other words, do they stay or do they go? And what they need to do to move forward to ensure that they make the right decision. Because most guys, they get trapped in this decision, and I call it the nexus of indecision. This place of do I stay or do I go? Because there's a lot hinging on it. And guys don't want to make a mistake. They want to make sure that they're doing the right thing for themselves, for their kids, and potential future with this woman. So in this video, I'm gonna go over the five things that you should know or do to determine if you should stay or if you should go. My name is Ed Baxter and I help guys in betrayal situations. I've coached thousands of men. Tens of thousands of men have come through my doors in one form or another. I've had over 3,000 guys come through the Betray the Badass program. And that's what we do. We'll get you to that place where you make the right decision for you and your children. So if you're already in this position, you're already having some doubts. So one of the things that you should do is assess those doubts. Really get clear on them. Write them down. Look at this list. Make a whole list if you have to. Get really clear on what the doubts that you have are in this relationship. Because the last thing that you want to do is end up going into this collision with her or just breaking up with her saying, yeah, I just don't, it doesn't feel right. So we're going to get really tactical on what's going on here. Because if you're stuck in this place where you're not sure if you should stay or you should go, you're probably endlessly ruminating about what you should be doing and how you should be moving forward. And this keeps you trapped. It keeps you stuck in what I call the nexus of indecision. And this place, this nexus of indecision completely robs you of all of your personal power. You don't feel like you can do anything. Most men feel trapped in their relationships. They live this life of quiet desperation because they're in it for the kids or they're in it for, I just don't want to be lonely or another woman won't like me. And so what we got to do is you got to start thinking about what it is specifically that's not making you happy. And I know you've already got a couple of things on your plate. Usually for most men, it's I'm not getting the attention that I want. I'm not getting the sex that I want. I'm not getting the appreciation that I want. She's not devoted to me. Or maybe she rags you all the time. Whatever happens to be, you got to get really clear on what that is. Then from this place, we can start knocking out the issues. And I'll talk about how we can do that in the rest of this video. But first, let's start making that list and go do that now. All right, my brother, you have made that list. So the next step you're going to do is you're going to have to have a collision. Yes, you're going to have to talk to her about it. And you're like, why am I going to talk to her about it? I've already mentioned these things a hundred times. Most likely you haven't. Most guys are too afraid to actually collide with their woman. And then when they do, somehow it gets turned around back on them. And so you got to be like a dog with a bone for what you require. But at the same time, there's nothing wrong with being understanding what her position is, but you have to have this open line of communication and say, these are the things that I need in my relationship. This is what I need and this is what I require. And you can tell her, hey, you know, you're welcome to make a list as well. In fact, I encourage you to do so because we can't make this go forward unless we relate to each other. Remember, relationships are about relating. And so if you can't relate to each other, if you can't try to meet each other's needs, then what's the point? Right? Relationships are also about giving. So if you're not willing to give to the other person and they're not willing to give to you as much as you're willing to give to them, then we're not playing a game of relationship. We're playing a game of being taken advantage of. And no guy wants to be taken advantage of or exploited. And I think that's probably the greatest fear that most men have in any relationship is getting exploited. Now, once you have had that collision, you've talked to her about this, you start working on what your needs and desires are, and she's told you what hers are, you can start having this dialogue. Now comes the next thing actually putting rubber to the road and making those changes. This is the hardest part for most people. It's one thing to say, hey, this is what I want in my relationship. It's another thing to have a conversation about what it is you want. It's a totally another thing to actually make those changes. Most people can't make changes in their life. Or if they do, they make these little changes that are just, just enough just to get by, just until their partner or anybody gets onto them and then they kind of button it up and they become agreeable again. And so we don't want to be that kind of guy. We don't want to be the guy that just barely changes. We want the guy that transforms from this position to this other position that's more desirable over here. And you probably know this as well. You know the person that you work with or you've worked for, and this, this person is like they just barely do enough to get by. And because they only button up and they only really make things change whenever you get on to them. And then, the, but those changes aren't lasting because that other person doesn't really desire the changes. And so this is the big problem that happens with most relationships is one person will say, hey, I, like, I need this to happen. And the other person won't change or they'll change just enough to get their partner to shut the fuck up. And then they go back to how they were. And this is what kills most marriages and most relationships. Somebody will say, hey, I want to make a change. I need this to be different. I need you to talk to me about things. I need more intimacy. I need more affection. Or I want you to be more on my side with things. Or maybe I would like you to not be so disagreeable. And then they'll do it for a time. And then they'll go back to how they were because they don't really care. Because there's no consequence to not doing the thing. 
they'll have a conversation, they'll have a collision with their woman, or she'll have a collision with him, and things will change a little bit, and then it goes right back to how it was one week later. And this happens over and over and over again. Then the other partner now gets trained into, well, I don't really have to make any changes at all because I know where this ends up. I don't have to change. And so this becomes this place where the guy's like, well, I've seen where she can change a little bit. I see where it's possible, but why aren't they lasting changes? And this is what puts the guy in the nexus of indecision. He gets stuck in this place, the cesspool of indecision because he can't move forward because he sees the possibility of where the relationship could possibly go. And you being in this place, it robs you of all your power because in this place, you're now waiting for her. You have to make this decision powerfully for yourself. What is it that you want and what are you willing to sacrifice in order to get that for yourself in your life? If you can't do this, then you're not gonna be able to do this next step, which is facing reality. See, most guys don't wanna make that tough decision because they don't wanna face reality. They don't wanna face the reality that maybe their partner will not change. They don't wanna face the reality that they can't change or they're unwilling to change or they don't care about their partner enough to actually make a difference and do something different and operate in a different way. I've seen guys go down this road to where they will completely lose their health, their wealth, everything, because they don't wanna make a simple change like, hey, let's go take a a mile walk in the evenings. They'll just let everything fall apart. Or they'll like, I don't really wanna help my wife around the house. I'll just let her resent me and hold me in contempt for years and years and years. And then I wonder why she walked out the door and I can't get her to come back. Now at the 13th hour, I'm gonna make a change and hopefully I can entice her to come back. This is why she doesn't wanna come back. Because she knows you'll just do that last point I just discussed, just enough to do to get her back and she can't trust those changes. So why would she give you another chance? She's already held you in contempt. And so for you, you gotta make the tough decision. So what you gotta do is face reality. What reality are you actually living in? Are you in the reality where you can actually make changes in your relationship? Or are you in the reality where you're just hoping for the best and you'll just try anything because you're afraid of being alone, you're afraid of divorce, you're afraid of being separated, you're afraid for your children's future. So it keeps you from rising up and being the man that you should be. And so you sit in this place, this nexus of indecision robs you of all your power and you just do the next thing you do every day, every day, every day. The same routine of going to your business, coming home, getting yelled at by your wife, watching TV, drinking yourself stupid, and then going to bed and waking up the next day and wondering why your life fucking sucks and you're miserable and you have a short fuse and short temper for everybody because you're depressed. This is what happens with guys who do not face reality and they sit in a codependent relationship and they refuse to step out of the nexus of indecision and into a place of power to what they actually want. And so that brings us to our next point, making the tough decision. So you have all the data, you've seen what's going on, you've tried to communicate, you've enforced these boundaries, you've done everything you can, you've faced reality and now at this point you say, you know what, I have to make a decision. Do I make this work or do I go? Because in order for you to make this work, you have to be willing to walk away. Because if you're not willing to walk away, your partner doesn't realize or will not feel the fact that you hold the cards for what you want in your life. Your greatest gift is your time and attention. You do not have to give it to those who do not appreciate it. Now, that being said, you want to take a hard inventory of yourself and see what you're doing too. The greatest determining factor of solving your relationship problems lies within you and the way that you operate and the way that you present yourself in your life and in your relationship. If you take an honest assessment and you find that you probably should do make this one decision, and this is where most guys come to me, is they say, Ed, I know what I have to do. I'm just afraid to make the decision. Can you please give me the permission to do so? And this is where most guys get stuck. And I was stuck in this place. I was dating this girl back in college and I was too afraid to break up with her because I needed somebody to give me permission to tell me I was doing the right thing because I didn't want to come off as a bad guy. But she had other problems going on. I was taking all of her problems on to the point where I gave myself an anxiety attack and I was like, I can't support this person emotionally anymore. She has to go figure it out on her own. I need to live my life. I cannot take care of you forever. I was enabling her and the situation. And so for you watching this video, if you're trying to figure out if you should stay in your relationship, you have to be willing to make that tough decision and step through the fear to get to the empowerment on the other side. See, most men, the only thing about courage is just that this guy is willing to step through the fear. Everybody feels the fear. But the guys that are successful in life are the ones that are willing to feel the fear anyway and do it. And if you can feel the fear anyway and do what it is required, then you will have more success than 99% of men or people on this planet. Most men are afraid to end their relationship because they get caught in the trap of what I call the 80% girl. She's not 95 plus percent of what you really want. So in other words, she doesn't really knock your socks off. But you know, she checks some of the boxes and it's a decent relationship. Maybe you're having sex on a regular basis. Maybe she's decent, but you feel like you could do more. You could do better. 
And trust me when I tell you, she feels this and it destabilizes the relationship. And when you get caught in the situation of being with an 80% girl, you're already settling and you know you're settling because it's only 80% of what you want. We all know you want 100%, but we cut that back a little bit to 95% because you can't find necessarily somebody perfect. Nobody's gonna be exactly the blueprint that you want, but you get 95% of the qualities because this person will absolutely knock your socks off. So when you get with the 80% girl, what ends up happening is you have conflicts that never get resolved and you always feel like you could do better. And you keep feeling like maybe you want to date some other people and you keep getting attracted to all these other women. You keep wanting to seek validation from these other women out there. And so this means that you have some internal work that you need to do and you get clear on who you are and what's compelling you to seek this outside validation from women. And you also got to start looking at yourself and saying, where am I afraid to actually go and do what I want? Because again, your ability to step through fear and actually go towards what you want is going to be your greatest determining factor of your success in relationships and it's the thing that makes you the most attractive. So paradoxically, you're trapped in this 80% girl situation and you're blocking that next person from coming into your life because you don't think you can find anything better or it's comfortable here hoping that somebody else will come along. So it's going to require you to go out on a limb. It's going to require you to go out into places that you're scared to go and you may not have ever been before. But that is where the fruit is. And if you want a little more advice on if you should stay or go, here, watch this video on the five questions you should ask yourself on if you should stay or go. And if you like this video, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe if you want to see more. And I love you, brother, and I'll see you in the next one.